while you guys and gals are waiting on the webinar to start, I do want to want to remind you that we have opened up the September Fix My Insurance Agency Workshop. The dates are going to be September 23rd and 24th. Of course, it's in Arlington, Texas. You can go out to www.fixmyinsuranceagency.com to see more details, dates, download the agenda, register, things like that. But again, the actual, the next Fix My Insurance Agency workshop is going to be held in September on Monday and Tuesday, September 23rd and 24th in Arlington, Texas. Okay, we'll start the webinar in just a few minutes. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, I absolutely appreciate you being here today. Today, we're going to talk about the electronic decline coverage form. I say electronic, but there's some people that are still doing it in email form. Hey, as long as it works, that's all that matters, right? The electronic decline coverage form. And this is something that we should send each time a major coverage or policy is declined in the agency. And that's after any communication, I don't care if it's text message, email, whatever. If we recommend something because we know it's in our customer's best interest and the customer declines it, they should get a decline coverage form. Now, obviously it was used for errors and omissions, but it increases upsells and cross sells by 30% in a typical agency. Like I said, 30%. And these are your current customers, which means it's much easier to sell a current customer than it is go out and look for new prospects and all that kind of stuff. So this is a phenomenal way for you to really maximize. Of course, it does offer ENO protection as well. Errors and omission. In case one of our staff, or in case we say something dumb, say something stupid, forget to say something, it also offers that protection for us as well. But I truly believe, and I've got the research to back it up, that is, it is the most important sales and retention tools when it comes to customers in an agency. That's how powerful it is. So let's go over some key points about the decline coverage form. First, the decline coverage form is, like I said, one of the most important documents in an agency. So if you don't have one, hopefully after today, you'll either copy ours or you will create one on your own. The form should allow a staff member to quickly add any major coverage to the form that the customer declines. And we'll go over that when we actually show you the form that we use. But don't make it difficult. A lot of people, a lot of agencies don't use the decline coverage form because they've got 12 different decline coverage forms for 10 different policy types and four different carriers and, and it's just too complicated. We want to simplify it, make it simple for everybody. The decline coverage form should get sent out to every customer that declines a major coverage. You know, life is all about our habits. If we have successful habits, we're going to be more successful people. If we have crappy habits, we're going to have a crappy life. Life is all about our habits. So for us and within the Williams Family Investment Group and within Inspire Nation when we're mentoring, we don't try to put the emotional piece in it. We don't try to figure out when's the right time to do this and what's the perfect conversation to make this happen. And we don't do that. Once this situation happens, we do this process. That's why we know it will get sent out with every customer that declines a major coverage. We don't pick and choose the customers that we send it to. The decline coverage form should be mobile optimized for cell phones and tablets. If you guys are doing any kind of DocuSign, right signature, any electronic signature tool, it's going to be mobile optimized. And we found that you're going to get a much greater response than just sending out an email. But like I said, it's better to send out something than nothing. So I want to open it up real quick and let's take some poll questions. Let me open up the poll here. My first poll question is, is this your first Inspire Nation training and mentoring webinar? So let me launch that for you. This is an actual live poll, guys and gals. The way this works, you take your cursor, you go up, you click on the answer that you want, and then in a second, I'll show you what the actual result is. So the question is, is this your first Inspire a Nation webinar? So far, 86% of you have voted. Yes, I can see who's voting and who's not voting. So if you haven't voted, there's no reason not to. Just go ahead and click on the appropriate answer. All right, I'm going to close and share the results with you. 
23% of you say yes, this is your first Inspire Nation webinar. Welcome, guys and gals. We appreciate you being here. We are the premier insurance agent mentoring and training company in the United States. Well, I say the United States, but we have we have agencies that we invest in and that we mentor all over the world, but we primarily out of the United States. So we absolutely appreciate you guys being here. And then 70, 77% say, no, this is not my first Inspire Nation webinar, and we always appreciate you guys coming back. All right, the next poll question that I'm going to ask you is, how do you currently use a decline coverage form in your agency? How do you currently use a decline coverage form in your agency? And your choices are, we don't use a decline coverage form. We use a decline coverage form for each specific, we have a decline coverage form for each specific thing that we do in the agency, or we use one form and fill in the specific coverage. So that second question is kind of written badly, but it, what it says is we have one decline coverage form for every carrier and for every specific policy, and you know, basically you got a multitude of decline coverage forms. So how do you use your decline coverage forms in your agency? And let's share the results with you. 53% say we don't use a decline coverage form. 33% say we have a decline coverage form for each specific coverage that a customer declines. And 13% say we use one form and fill in the specific coverage. Let's go to our next question, our final poll question. How does your agency primarily use a decline coverage form? And be honest about this, okay? Do you use it primarily for E&O protection? Do you use it for sales? Do you use it for retention? Or do you use it for all of the above? When I say be honest, meaning don't just say, well, because we send it out, it must cover all of those. What's your intent? What's your purpose when you use the decline coverage form? Is it for E&O protection? Is it for sales? Is it for retention? Or is it for all of the above? 71% that voted said E&O protection. Nobody says sales. Nobody said retention. And 29% said all of the above. I appreciate you guys participating in the polls. So now we're going to move on to the actual training part of it. As an investor in numerous agencies, Okay, and I mentor my company, not just me, my company mentors hundreds of agencies. I'm often asked if there was one marketing tool I could use in the agency for customers, what would it be? And I tell them all the time, without hesitation, without fail, it's the decline coverage form. Let me tell you kind of how the decline coverage form came about. Back in 2004, when I first started, I got out of the military, came into Allstate as an agent, and I opened my Allstate agency. I used a permission to contact form because that's what everyone was doing at that particular time. And I'll show you that form here in a second, a permission to contact form. We modified it. We souped it up. You know, we put it on steroids. We made it good and it was good. It was working really well for us, but it didn't do everything I needed it to do. It didn't stress the importance of if you don't have this, this is going to bite you in the butt. So I used that for the longest time. I had about 10 to 15% of the people that would actually fill out the form. And that left up to 90% of the people who didn't fill out the form. In 2008, I sold my Allstate agency, went independent, partnered with my first independent agency, and they were using decline coverage forms in the independent world differently than we were using them in the captive world. In the captive world, all I knew was the NO protection. That was it. But as we started to use them within the independent world, I noticed that a lot of those customers were calling back saying, hmm, before I sign this, this right signature or DocuSign is what we were using then, before I sign this DocuSign, explain to me what this coverage does. Explain to me how it's going to benefit me, how it's going to hurt me, all those other kind of things. So this is the form that we were using. And again, we souped it up. It wasn't this fancy when I first started using it at Allstate. We made it really fancy. We made it into a Google Doc, and it was, it was called the Permission to Contact and Optional Coverage Form. And there are still hundreds of agencies around the country that still use our version of this form because a lot of times it's based on your personality. 
And if you don't have an aggressive personality, maybe you're really laid back, you're concerned about stepping on your customer's toes and upsetting them, you're going to take what the least path of resistance. So you're going to choose the form that is the least aggressive with your customers. And this is a very non-aggressive form. So there are a lot of agencies that still use this. First name, last name, what's your primary contact number? Is there a number that you, is the number you provided above a mobile? This is also when we start getting permission to text message. And if you're not getting permission to text message, you need to. For those of you, this is your first time, you probably missed some of our other biweekly training. We talked about the importance of text messaging in today's society. You need to get permission to do that. So this is when we first started getting permission to text message. Then we had our optional coverage section down here. And I'm going to read this wording verbatim. It says, please read the description of the optional coverage and accept or decline adding the coverage to your policy or insurance profile. These are optional coverage and are not part of your base policy or personal insurance profile. Any accept answer will trigger a call from the agency concerning the coverage. Only mark accept if you want to add the coverage or you want to discuss the coverage. As you can see, it's really <laughs> passive wording on that, right? Not aggressive at all. So we would have them, we'd send this out by email or by write signature or DocuSign, and they would fill it out, you know, click accept on towing and lock out or identity. And again, any accept answer triggered a call from the agency. And it was really cool for the staff because they only call people who were like, I want to talk about this coverage. So while it increased sales more than I anticipated, it still wasn't good enough. I felt it wasn't good enough, even though I talked about a lot of different things. So if you guys are looking at this and you say, well, Billy, I really want to use this. You know, I want to know how to go about creating this or I want to go, go about using this. Let me take you back over to the slide that talks about it. And just go to Bitly. We always use a Bitly document. So you go to bit.ly forward slash capital I, capital A, capital N, optional coverage form. So bit.ly forward slash IAN optional coverage form. IAN, of course, is Inspire Nation. Now, remember, if you're looking, if you're on the phone and you can't see this, let me say this again. It's bit.ly forward slash capital I, capital A, capital N, and then all lowercase optional coverage form. So that will take you back to the form that I'm showing you on the webinar right now. And so it, it allowed us to talk about a lot of things and explain a lot of things, what scheduled personal property was, what flood coverage was, life insurance. And then it gave them an opportunity to click on any additional policies that they'd like a quote for, such as commercial auto, certificate of deposits, inland marine, all those kind of things. It also allowed us to discuss our referral uh, program that we had, and it allowed them to identify which staff service them today. So this is a great tool. I'm, I'm not knocking it at all, but it wasn't really a decline coverage form. It was more of a, per, of a permission to contact form and an optional coverage form. So me being a salesperson, I'm a sales guy and through and through. So what I wanted to do was really maximize the decline coverage part of this. And I looked at all these different agencies and they were using 10 different forms for 10 different things and sometimes they got it back and sometimes they didn't and the customer was like well you sent me seven different forms i didn't know what i was declining i didn't know what i was accepting it was just really really confusing so around 2010 i created the decline form that we use currently and that allowed us to put everything on one form and if you want to see i'm going to show you that form but if you want to know how to download that, a copy of that form, let our chat bot help you out with that. And the way you use our chat bot is very simple. You go to bit.ly, if you're on the web, go to bit.ly forward slash D-C-O-V webinar. So it's abbreviation for decline coverage webinar. Now, if you're using text messaging, you would text D-C-O-V webinar to 43506. So again, if you're using text messaging, and I don't know why you would want this on your cell phone, but just in case you do, you can just text DCOV webinar to 43506. You're like, well, why don't you have a slide? Because I really don't want you texting. 
I really want you to pull this down on the web so that you can uh, talk to our chat bot. Of course, you can talk to our chat bot over the over your phone as well, your mobile device. But I think you actually want to save a copy of this form to your computer, which is why I don't have it on text. But bit.ly dcov webinar. Okay, this is an email version because most people, if you've never had a decline coverage form, you probably want to start with an email version of it and then change it to a DocuSign right signature or something like that. But the email version works really well. And for our members, this is also inside the video document library. You can download it and get the, the latest version as well from inside the video document library. It says to the customer first name. And again, this, you just click here and fill this information in. Customer last name, customer policy, or quote. Notice it says quote. Yes, we use the decline coverage form when we're quoting. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're a weak or passive salesperson or weak or passive agency, don't try to use the decline coverage form when you're quoting. This is for agents that are really strong and confident in what they're saying, strong in how they're presenting their product or their service to that particular customer and saying, look, if I recommend this. If you don't want this, I don't have a problem selling you something less than this but I'm gonna need you to sign off on this decline coverage form, just so you know that I recommend this, but you feel comfortable not accepting this. So like I said, if you're not strong, if you're not a strong salesperson, if you're not confident in what you're selling, confident in the insurance recommendations you're making, don't try to use it in the quote process. Simply use it with your current customers. So here we put the customer policy number and the quote number from the date, and then it says, Customer decline of coverage. Now, ours, of course, says per the agency guidelines, new policies can't be bound until this decline coverage form is signed and returned to the agency. Again, I'm going to stress one more time. If you're not a strong salesperson, if you're not confident in what you're saying and you're copying our form, just get rid of that whole little sentence right there. Just don't even put it on there. Okay says the coverage and policies listed below should not be considered comprehensive. There could be additional coverage, policy, and insurance portfolio weaknesses that the agency has not identified or that are on policies that, that you have with an agency other than ours. To provide the absolute best insurance advisor benefits to you, please provide us copies of all declarations pages for any insurance policies you purchased outside of our agency. Do you see what I'm doing there, guys and gals? I'm already up front asking them, let me quote everything. And if you're not going to let me quote it, at least let me make sure that what we are quoting you doesn't have weaknesses that are exacerbated by other policies, or perhaps we need to cover other weaknesses that, that are on other policies. So as an example, let me give you an example. Let's say auto policy, right? So I'm, on an, I'm quoting an auto policy, and then... I ask for the medical benefits of the auto policy I'm in a medical state, let's say. And the person says, oh, well, I don't need it. Well, why not? Because I have health insurance. Okay. Well, what's your deductible on your health insurance? Uh, 15,000. 15,000. Hey, you know what? I can add up to 25,000 in medical coverage for a few dollars, which means if you're in an auto accident, I can cover the deductible on your health insurance. So you don't have to pay anything out of pocket to meet that deductible. We'll cover it up to that limit because you were in an auto accident. Again, by understanding what policies they have, I can offer things on our policies that cover their weaknesses. That's why that wording is there. To provide the absolute best insurance advisor benefits to you, Please provide us copies of all declarations pages for any insurance policies you purchased outside of our agency. We will complete a complimentary review and help you identify any coverage, policy, or insurance profile weaknesses. Then we get to the power part. By signing your electronic signature below, you're agreeing to the following statement. I understand and acknowledge that the following insurance coverage was explained and offered to me and that I have decided not to purchase the coverage at this time. Then our wording, this is where you can just write in the particular things that they decline. Maybe you quoting them four different policies. You could put each of those things that you recommended that they decline, you could put each of them on this one form. 
It says, decline coverage and example scenario where a lack of protection could result in denial of a claim. So on this one, I would put, all right, you decline uninsured motorists. And then the example would be, you got hit by a driver that did not have insurance or was or didn't have enough insurance to cover the total claim because you turned down this coverage you could be denied benefits during a claim and then maybe it's a homeowner's and they turned down flood as an example and it would say coverage decline flood scenario example scenario a heavy rain comes there's no strong wind and your roof starts to leak uh, and, um, you know, something like that. And, and it's de declared a disaster. Well, because you don't have flood coverage, you wouldn't be covered under FEMA. I'm using that as an example. Maybe it wasn't a good example, but you get my point. You wouldn't you wouldn't uh, be covered under FEMA or or the the roads back up. We see that a lot, especially in the major urban areas where the the um, gutters or the sewer, not the gutters, but the actual road will back up. They just can't handle all the rain and all the water and everything. And it actually runs back into the house or back into the basement or back into, you know, the, the structure. Well, that should fall under flood, but it's not because you don't have flood coverage. So you could put as detail as you want here. But that's something that we added, decline coverage and example scenario where lack of protection could result in denial of a claim. And we always put the example scenario so that way people can't say, well, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't understand what you, if you had explained to me better, I probably would have taken it because it's amazing how people lie or they have selective memory when a claim happens. And they say, well, you never told me that. Yes, I did. Well, you didn't explain it well. Anyway, it's my fault, right? It always comes back to the insurance agent, something that we did. So this is how we put that. This is why we put those examples down there and you put it on one form. Then it says, the potential financial impact of not having these important coverages and policy types has been explained to me and I realize that my rejection of these options will result in the denial of claims in the future. And again, this is an email version and I would suggest for those of you that have never had an actual right signature kind of document or you're not good at that kind of stuff, Use an email version at first, but your goal should always be to get it to a right signature, DocuSign, Sign Now, one, whatever you're using, whatever you're using, it doesn't matter. It should always be your goal to get it to that because you want to send this out as an electronic signature form. Okay, real important that you do that. And again, if you want to see our version of this, you just talk to our chat bot. And our chatbot will walk you through, let you download it. Our chatbot will also tell you about the upcoming Fix My Insurance Agency workshop. She'll also help guide you if you want to know more about our membership. So the chatbot will really help guide you on a lot of things. And to get to our chatbot, simply go to bit.ly forward slash DCOV webinar. Okay, and that'll get you there. Now, if you want to download our decline coverage form, learn more about our insurance agent mentoring programs and see our upcoming Fix My Insurance Agency workshop, maybe you don't necessarily need the form, but you do want to find out more stuff, this is where I actually put the text message part here. So I already told you the web part, but you can also text message DCOV webinar, D-C-O-V-W-E-B-I-N-A-R, text message that to 43506. For those of you that are not strong at text messaging, instead of putting in a phone number, you simply put 43506 and in the body of the email or in the body of the text, you put DCOV webinar to 43506. And then you'll get back a link to our chat bot and she will help guide you through whatever you're looking for related to Inspire Nation. Or you can go out to our website, inspirenation.org and that'll help you as well. So here's what I wanna do right now. I wanna open it up. And I wanna take some questions or comments based on what we've talked about so far. Her question was, how do we use it for current clients? Well, Nira, we use it multiple times. So let's say the person became a brand new customer, right? I'm gonna take you through some different scenarios. Brand new customer. The moment we bind that policy, we start filling out our electronic decline coverage form and we send that over to them. Notice I said bind meaning we already got their check, we already got their money, we already got their credit card, whatever that is, because I'm, I'm not trying to scare the sale away. 
and then we send over that decline coverage form. Then part of our new customer policy or our new customer follow-up is five to seven business days or however long it takes for your carriers to issue the policy. We will, we will contact them, call them by phone, and we'll remind them again, hey, you declined this coverage. We sent you over the decline coverage form. If we got it back, we discuss it. So you remember signing off on this, you're good to go. Yes, we are. Or they say, well, I got it, but I haven't had a chance to look at it. And then we have them sign it that time. So that's with a new customer. Then when we're doing a policy review, we have them sign it again. Okay. Yes, I know that maybe they became a new customer. And then 90 days later, you do a policy review. But every time we don't worry about the, well, this happened this, so I'm going to skip this. It's much easier to just follow the process, the habits that are there. So when we do a policy review, we do it as well. We do it when they do an endorsement. They call in to make an endorsement, and it's a major coverage. Maybe they call in to do something with their homeowners, and we see they don't have flood, okay? Or we've never sat down and discussed life insurance. At that point, we'll also do a decline coverage form, and then we'll do it at other trigger times, like maybe their birthday, because we like to do a birthday review with every one of our customers. So if it's their birthday, we'll prep up the decline coverage form for what they don't have, send it over to them and say, we'll discuss these things when we do our birthday review. So it's multiple times, Nira, that you can you can use that, okay? You can use that multiple times. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I can't hear you, so I'm gonna assume it does. Eric, my man, are you there? I am, can you hear me? I can. I hear you fine. Thank you so much. So, Eric, let's talk. I'm going to ask you two specific questions. Number one, do you use a decline coverage form? And number two, will you use it differently because of training today? So we currently use a uh, a flood, a rejection of flood. Down in New Orleans, obviously, flood insurance is, is pretty important. So we've been using a rejection of flood form for a long time. Uh, and we're in the process of implementing your declination form. We haven't pulled the trigger on it completely for for various reasons, just because we got a lot of a lot of other changes going on. Mm -hmm. But it's uh it is on the um it is on the agenda. Okay. Now the thing that you can really help your people with is write up a scenario. Remember on on our decline coverage form it says here's an example scenario. Write up an example mm -hmm. scenario that they can copy and paste, or just build it on the form itself you know or well i guess because you're going to manually put it in just have the scenarios kind of written up that they can copy and paste it's amazing how many people just can't think on the fly i don't know if it's the pressure or whatever but those oh, i can't think of a scenario so then they don't send out the form so i know how structured you are in your agency so just help them out by having some 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 examples already ready for them to just copy and paste does that make sense yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else, Eric, before I let you go? No, no, that's it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Brooke, how you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored. I'm so blessed and highly favored. It's crazy. <laughs> that's how good I'm doing. I love it. So as a new agency, I'm kind of bumping up against the same, uh, if, if you want to say the word excuse, um, I need to learn what the uh, different scenarios might be that, some, you know, I mean, the uninsured, underinsured, I've got that. Um, higher limits in different areas, maybe liability, personal liability on a homeowner's, like, huh. Mm -hmm. I, I need, let me, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Let me just that. jump in real quick, Brooke. You bet. The average customer, I'm just being honest, the average mm -hmm. customer could care less about liability. OK, I'm, I'm just being honest. The only time they care about yep. it is if they're going to get sued or something like that. So for you to bring it up, it sounds like you're having more of a self-serving conversation than a protection conversation. What customers care about, first of all, there are three pots of money. You're a new agent, so you get this mentoring for free. OK, OK. All right. Today, I'm not saying I'm going to give it to you every time for free, but I'm giving it to you right now for free. All right. So there are three pots of money in insurance. I don't care what kind of policy you sell. I don't care how fancy the policy is you sell. At the end of the day, it comes to three pots of money. There's money for you and your family, money for others you could end up owing, and then money to repair or replace what you choose to insure. That's 
all insurance is in a nutshell. Okay, that's all insurance is. Now you say, well, what about commercial? Well, in that case, your family becomes your or your employees become your family. So it's still money for you and your employees. Money for others you could end up owing, whether that's through manufacturer's liability or whether that's through a slip and fall or whatever, you could end up owing others some, somebody else. And then there's money to repair or replace what you choose to insure, whether that's your car, a piece of machinery, or your income in case of a life insurance policy. Okay. What customers care about, Brooke, is they care about money for them and their family first. And then they care about money to repair or replace what they choose to insure. And finally, they care about money that they could owe to others. Okay, that's okay. our emotional way we do this. So when you're talking about a coverage, let's, let's say an auto, start with something simple. On an auto policy, money for you and your family would be uninsured and underinsured motors, Comp and medical collision. coverage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, comp and collision yeah, that, is money you'd end up owing to someone else. You'd pay that to the people repairing your car. That money doesn't come to your pocket. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Even rental and towing, which is money to repair or replace what you choose to insure. Right? Because you're choosing to say, if my car uh, gets in a wreck, I want collision and that money, that $500 is going to go to them so they would get her fixed. And then on rental, the money is going to go to the rental car company. So if you really want to make these, my suggestions and what we teach really powerful, always start with money for them and their family. On a homeowner's, money that goes directly into their pockets, additional living expenses. That's a check that's written to them. And additional living expenses is usually 10% of whatever their structure is, whatever the, the replacement cost of their home is. So a lot of times we'll tell people, if you, let's say Eric, who's down in, in Louisiana, at any moment, that city could be underwater. So right. we're going to insure you to replacement costs. And people go, oh, I think I'm overinsured. Mm, well, let's look at this. 10% of that money goes to make sure that you got a shelter, you got a roof over your head, you can stay in a hotel, you can rent a house, you know, you can rent an Airbnb, you can do whatever you got to do to make sure that you're taken care of. And some of that goes for emergency care. Maybe you need clothes because all your clothes are in the house when the house burned down. So now you need emergency clothes or you need emergency food. That's what additional living expenses is for. So if they say, well, no, I don't want, I, I want my house insured for this because this is what state farm can do it for this is what farmers can do it for this is what you know travelers can do it for well that's all cool but that's not what we recommend because there are too many other coverages tied to just there are too many other coverages that are involved other than just replacement cost of your home does okay. that make sense am I, am I getting a little too too professorial here i don't, I don't mean to be nope. i am okay perfect so then maybe they decline um, a coverage like jewelry coverage. And you say, well, okay, well, did you buy your wife a wedding ring or buy, do you have a band or you have, yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Well, most insurance, most insurance companies are going to cover you for a thousand bucks. So anything more than a thousand dollars, you're probably not going to be covered for. And that's after your deductible. So what's your deductible on your homeowners? Oh, it's $2,500. So basically, you have nothing to cover the furs and jewelries and diamonds and watches and whatever else. So the fact that you're turning that down, I'm going to put that on a decline coverage form. And I'm just going to put the scenario out here because you have a $2,500 deductible and you've turned down jewelry coverage. That means you probably will not be covered for any claim on jewelry under $2,500. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So what else do you sell, Brooke? Give me... Um, cause I could do, I could do this all day. This is what I do. This, I do this in my sleep. I love this. So <laughs> tell me something specific that you sell that I can. Okay. Uh, this is, for. this is good. So work comp in the state of Texas, you don't okay. legally have to purchase here in Texas. We're still the wild, wild west. That's what I tell everybody. Yes, we are. I'm in Texas. So yes, we are. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're not required, if my, I've got clients who don't want to, because they're not legally required to, 
like in other mm -hmm. states, and they say, well, we have we have a group health insurance policy that, you know, to take care of our employees, or some of them don't even have that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say they do, though. Let's look at that scenario. Let's say they do have a group health insurance to take care of their employees. Well, that group health, group health insurance, as you well know, health insurance in general, has a lot of limitations. It has a lot of things that the health insurance company will come back and say, we're not going to cover. We're not going to cover all of it. Maybe the, maybe the person needs an MRI, and the health insurance company says, no, we'll only pay for an X-ray. But the doctor recommends an, X, an MRI. So that means if that person wants to get an MRI through that doctor's recommendation and the health insurance declines it, their only option is to sue you, the employer. Okay. Okay. That's their only option. So while you're saving money, you're saving money while standing on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> okay. Right. So what good is $5 if you're about to fall off a cliff? <laughs> Not so good. I mean, that would, that, would close, that would close their business if they have. You know what I mean? Have, yeah, and there are a lot of people could. that fall off a cliff with money in their pocket. <laughs> so the people who find you at the bottom of the ravine appreciate the money. In that particular case, that's the lawyers that, that are going to help sue you. Mm -hmm. But saving a few dollars here or there just to avoid protection doesn't make a lot of sense, bro. Okay. That's how I would write that up. I okay. would actually write up a scenario because, again, it's easier just to cut and paste when you, when you have this decline coverage form. I would write up a scenario that says, um, Yes, but the health insurance companies are going to make the decision of what they will accept and what they will decline. And anything that they decline, you're now on the hook for if this, is a, if this was an injury that happened at work. So you may be saving a few dollars, but you could be standing on the, on the edge of a cliff. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for unmuting. Are there any other questions or anything that... I can answer for you? No, sir. Thank you. All right. Good. Thank you. All right, let me take a couple more. I know you guys are trying to get back to work, and you're like, it's just a decline coverage form, Billy. How do you draw these things out? Because, guys, I love to share knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is how I've used it. Wisdom is how we've helped other people to use it. So let's see who else we got here. We've got Josh. Josh, let me find you, Josh. You're in the Jays. Hey, Josh, how you doing, my man? Hey, Billy. Good. What, what, what question you got for me, Josh? Um, just, uh, it's kind of an interesting one. Do you feel that using this type of form could create an unintended fiduciary responsibility to the client um, if phrases like, we will help you identify any coverage policy or insurance profile weakness? Um, no, because that, that, that runs a risk there of exposing to that sort of claim. No, and I'm glad you asked that because I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some other people that have that same fear. So let me go over, and I have my lawyers look at this to make sure our butts were covered and so let me see the way we the way we make sure our butts were covered is this one simple statement up here oh let me find it where is it where is it where is it, it says uh da, 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 there you go the coverage and policies listed below should not be considered comprehensive there could be additional coverage, policy, and insurance portfolio weaknesses that the agency has not identified or that are on policies that you have with an agency other than ours. Okay. So when we, you know, I have like 11 or 12 lawyers that are, their whole job is to protect my corporation. So when we looked at this and we said, what can we get by in every single state that will cover this, including Portland? I mean, Portland is not a state. How dumb do I sound? But Oregon, which is the... Um, you know, like the most liberal state in the union and California and the West Coast states and all that. And so we uh, we've actually had this stand up where they said, well, look, we never told you we found everything. We never told you we were responsible for everything. We told you this isn't comprehensive. So there were things that we didn't have because there were people who were like, well, you told me this and you told me this, but you didn't tell me that. Well, because we can't discover everything. So it's not comprehensive. So does that answer your question, Josh? Yes, sir. And again, you have to go with what's comfortable for you. And if you feel like, hey, by using it, I'm putting myself out there, 
But I can tell you what, by not using something, you're just like I said with Brooke, you're standing on a cliff. That's what you're doing. You're standing on the edge of a cliff. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. All right. Let's see. Let me take one more. Let's see who else we got out here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Clarence, my man, Clarence. Mr. Palmer, how you doing, sir? Hello. Of course. You oh, this is not that. Mr. Palmer. This is. <laughs> This is, this is Holly. Hey, Holly. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We okay, talk are, to me. What you got? We have uh, worked on implementing your declaration statement. So I've talked to several people in regards to it when we're talking, and they automatically are like, oh, okay, well, let's talk about that. So it, it does make a difference. And that's what we want. If, you know, at the end of the day, and you know me, you came to my workshop, we've talked on the phone. I'm a sales guy. You know, because I understand <laughs> if if nothing gets sold, nobody gets right. nobody gets paid. You right. know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I'm a sales guy first and foremost. But this will trigger so many more sales conversations, and it puts the ball in the customer's court. You know what I mean? So exactly. they're not just saying, "Well, I didn't know." And it also puts the ball back in the agents. The if they have an agent, mm -hmm. I love this. They'll have an agent. And they'll say, well, my, my other agent's taking care of this. And I'll say, well, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I looked at your deck page. You've got this weakness, this weakness, this weakness. Now, before you go back, let me tell you what's going to happen. And I always paint the picture. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to go back and you're going to say, this agent told me that this was a weakness, this was a problem, and this was a problem. And then the other agent told me that you were going to say, I can fix that. I can take care of that. And then the other agent told me to say, why didn't you take care of it at first? first. Why did somebody else have to find it? Exactly. Yep. Yep. And that's what I've been getting to from a, um, a lot of the clients that I talk with when I'm t I may be talking to them about commercial, but then something comes up where I can talk to them about some personal stuff. And they're like, well, I'm using so-and-so. I said, well, but did they tell you about this or did they tell you about that? And immediately they're either saying, okay, let me give you my deck page to what I have with them and let's see if you can come up with a better rate because it seems that you have a little bit more information that you're willing to share and make sure I'm taken care of holistically rather than just on what I call for. And you know what? And you were in my class, and we were talking about don't become another agent showroom. Okay? Right. Don't become another agent showroom. And for those of you that are on the call, what that means is I'm going to use a scenario. Blockbuster became Amazon's showroom. Okay. I rem Netflix, excuse me, not Amazon, but Netflix. I remember standing inside of a Blockbuster store, looking at movies, making a list of movies and then going to Netflix and ordering those movies. And that's back when they used to mail them to you. They had the two-day delivery and all that other stuff before they did online. Well, a lot of agents, you become another agent's showroom. So because you're not telling your customer, hey, this is a problem, you're declining a coverage that's extremely important, you're turning down something that I strongly recommend you have, now when they're out shopping, and they are shopping you. Don't think your customer's not shopping you. They are. Now when they're out shopping you, that other agent has firepower. That other agent can say, oh, your agent didn't tell you this, or your agent didn't say this, and your customers, they deal with 10,000 conversations a month. They're not going to remember you mentioning on a phone, oh, by the way, you don't have this. Oh, okay, thanks. They're just hanging up to get off, off your phone call to go to the next phone call. So don't make yourself another agent's showroom. And that's why you send the decline coverage form. I don't care if you send an email. I don't care if you send an electronic signature. Send something. I don't care if you don't even send a document. If you just put it in an email to them and say, you turn down this coverage that I think you should have. Do something so that that person can't go to another agent and that other agent undercut you or make you look silly because your customer's like, well, my agent never told me that. Does that make sense, Holly? It does. Perfect. Okay. All right. So. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to bring up or talk about? That's it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. 
All right. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? It looks like I got about, oh, I got about five more minutes. So I can talk to some more people. You guys probably don't know this about me, but I like to talk to people. Okay. I do. I like to talk to people. All right. Let's see. If you have a microphone and you can talk, please put something out there. Let me know that you have a microphone. All right. If not, doesn't look like anybody else said they have a microphone. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the slides and I'm going to show you if you want to get a copy of some of the things we looked at today. So let's look at all of them. If you want to get a copy of the permission to contact form, it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash I-A-N optional coverage form. And the I-A-N is capitalized. So bit.ly, I-A-N optional coverage form. If you want to get a copy of the actual permission to contact form that we use now, okay, then go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash D cov webinar d c o v webinar if you want if you're on your mobile device and you want to get that form and have it texted to you text d c o v webinar to 43506 if you want to know more about our mentoring programs if you want to see our upcoming fix my insurance agency implementation workshop and for those of you that are brand new never heard of this we actually do a two-day hands-on implementation. So that means if you come to the workshop, we don't just talk about the decline coverage form. We're actually going to create the decline coverage form right there in class. We don't just talk about social networking. We're actually going to create your social networking, social networking profile. If you don't have one, we're also going to show you how to use social networking, how to do your business referral partners. If you don't, if your agency management system is not set up properly, we're going to show you how to do that. If you don't have the, the email templates that you should have in place, we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to go over all the different core processes. Um, the, there are 14 core weekly processes that every week in your agency, it should happen. Those things should happen every single week. Here, let me go to inspirenation.org and show you what I'm talking about here. And I'm going to go to our weekly processes. daily schedule, core weekly task list. So on the core weekly task list, check messages, endorsement, claims, new customer, emergency contacts, rate increases, uh, testimonials, uh, policy weaknesses. So we go over all of those and in the class, we actually set it up. So I'll click right here. I'll just click on new customer. And we go through and we say, okay, based on that, here's, here's what the new customer process looks like. Here are the tools that you need in place. So let's get all these tools set up, your electronic business card, your text message, your appointment scheduling tool, maybe using Simply Book or Calendly. And we actually set those up in the workshop. So when you walk away from the workshop, this is not a, oh, I got a bunch of information in a bag that I'm going to walk around with. This is, dang, my stuff is actually set up. I'm ready to go back and get this going. And we want two people, whether it's the principal agent or two people from the agency, but we also have webinar. So each particular block, the people back at the agency that you want participating, they're on the webinar portion of that training as well. So if you've got 70 people, you send two to the workshop and maybe you've got 30 at a time that you want to actually watch a particular training, they can be on the webinar part. So we really try to make this as comprehensive and as thorough as possible. And that's the Fix My Insurance Agency workshop. To find out more about it, simply go to our homepage at inspireanation.org, inspireanation.org, and you'll see the September Fix My Insurance Agency two-day process implementation workshop. And for those of you that have gone to a workshop before, you're a member, and you've, uh, you've actually paid for a workshop, September is free to you. You can come to that workshop at no cost because I want to keep you up to date on what's happening. You don't have to pay again. You just need to pay for your hotel and your travel but you can come to the workshop at no cost if you've already paid for the workshop once of the one of the previous workshops that we've done. Okay, so with that being said, guys, I'm gonna let you guys get out of here and get back to work. I appreciate you being here. Make sure that you register for the next uh, upcoming biweekly webinar that we're having. We're having two weeks, not sure what the topic is. You guys can go out and look at that, but make sure you register for that, okay? I appreciate you guys being here. Always a pleasure to share our knowledge and wisdom with you. Thanks. Bye-bye.